This book was incredibly like entertaining to reread. Why are none of these children getting like corrected for their behaviors ever. Nessie was a regular person. She just knew how to hide it. Greetings from the floor in front of my bookshelf. Welcome to part two of reading the click books so you don't have to. In this book, I'm gonna be reading book two, Revenge of the Wannabes, and book three, Invasion of the Boy Snatchers. Can we just talk about these titles? They're so fun. If you're lost, I am going to insert a card so that you can find the first video from this series where I read books one and two from the click books and I give you the full rundown of everything that happens and we laugh and make fun and we point out the weird things, reminisce about the past. It was a good time. So I'm excited to continue. Also one last thing before we get into it, I wanna point out that this book was $10. You can't really see it over this old price sticker, but $9.99. And this book says it was $4.99. These are not the prices I bought them at. I got them for like probably 75 cents or something. But I wonder why that is. Ooh, this is a first edition from March of 2005. This is also a first edition from October of 2005. So why did the price decrease? Speaking of first editions, I have noticed some typos in the books. Next time I find one, I'm gonna record it and I will show you because sometimes I'm like, typo? But yeah, let's jump in. Funny, this copy that I got from Goodwill. I'm not gonna show it, but there's a picture of two kids in it that's like laminated. I don't know what to do with it. I feel bad throwing away someone else's photo. This book is from Alicia's perspective, and so far she's in dance class. She likes dance class because she's the most popular girl in the room. But she just said she's 5'4". I know that's not tall, but that's taller than me. And she's still in seventh grade because this book is a continuation. It, it starts right after the other one ended. Alicia is gonna start her own clique. She has decided to have a sleepover with her dance girls because they are obsessed with her and she could be the leader of them. Like how Massey is the leader of the pretty committee. She could be the leader of her own group. And if you remember from last time, Alicia changed the ballots in the for the uniform contest, so her and Olivia won. She is like terrified that Massey's gonna say something about that. She's also kind of terrified to be defying Massey and having her own Friday sleepover. Why did I just get emotional? Just switch to Massey's perspective and she's writing a Christmas list and look who she included. New friend, Claire, and she's gonna get her a cell phone, a Nokia. Rip brick phones. I'm just glad that Massey is being nice to Claire. Like. It is kind of weird that she started off bullying her, but as we've established, she was insecure. Doesn't make it okay, but now they're friends, so like, this just proves there was no reason for her to be bullying her because now they're literally, she's literally gonna buy her a cell phone. Alicia and Olivia are at the Teen People Magazine headquarters to be interviewed about winning the uniform contest. Alicia is like kind of embarrassed by Olivia because Olivia keeps saying things wrong. In the elevator, Olivia was like, I bet I could sell my badge for getting in here on eBay and people laughed and Alicia was like, she's kidding. And Olivia's like, no, I wasn't. So she's kind of feeling like, how am I gonna be a leader when my clique, which is just Olivia right now, doesn't listen to me. But I wanted to record because, again, we have something that dates the book. This is the celebrities they listed as people who are, have been in this magazine. Josh Hartnett, Usher, Mary-Kate Nashley, and Hilary Duff, and also Jennifer Love Hewitt is in there too. Oh, and Alicia's driver has taken them and he is like their guardian on this trip and they're going to go to a Beyonce concert after and he was like, oh, that's my ticket, I'm taking you, like when they found the three tickets in the car. It's funny though, cause like right before they went up into the magazine headquarters, he was like, okay, I have to go with you and Alicia's like, I don't need a babysitter. And then a siren goes past and she screams and he, she's like, okay, lead the way. <laughs> We're back to Massey, Kristen, and Dylan, and they are getting spray tans. And the instructional video they watch is on a VCR. And Alicia just called 
And there's another dis. Alicia, do I sell fertilizer? No, why? Then why do you think I give a crap? I remember that eventually Claire starts taking daily pictures of her outfits. I was right. Claire takes pictures of her outfits and hangs them on the wall to keep track of what she wears so she doesn't wear the same thing twice. I've put on earrings since the last clip. Two new terms, glue, which is girl like us, which is essentially girls like Massey, Kristen, Dylan, or Alicia, and ew, which is eternal wannabe, which is what Alicia is becoming right now <laughs> because she's doing thing. We have found out from Massey, she was trying to upset Alicia, that apparently Alicia's dad is not actually Spanish and he, his last name is really Rivers and he changed his last name to Rivera so that her grandma would approve of him. So they keep calling her fake Spanish, which like her mother's literally from Spain. She's still Spanish. At the magazine, Olivia and Alicia have been offered a modeling gig and Massey has found out about it. So Alicia calls Massey and is like, they asked me to be a model. And when Massey finds this out, she's getting a spray tan. So she forgets to rub it in because she's so mad and then it messes up her spray tan. So now she's like really angry. And now she's like, okay, we got to call out her and Olivia for cheating. So her and Claire call the magazine, mostly Massey, and she's like, we cheated, what are you gonna do? And the woman's like, I don't care, as long as you're still gonna be able to model. And she's like, but don't gain a few pounds, which... But then she's like, oh, don't forget to send over your pictures of your four beautiful, in a regular sort of way, friends, so that they can be in the photo shoot too. Well, because it's Massey posing as Alicia on the phone, she's like, Claire, I'm gonna send a picture of you, me, Kristen, and Dylan. So now they are gonna be hijacking Alicia's photo shoot. Alicia just made a diss like Massey. Have you been hanging out with 50 Cent lately? Then where did you learn how to rap? And Massey replies with, Alicia, are you a poor dressmaker? Then why are you ripping off my material? So far, the third book is definitely my favorite. There is like a war going on between Alicia and Massey. Let me get my notes. Alicia is now like genuinely trying to form her own clique. She has Olivia, who she has been calling faux Olivia. First of all, because she has a fake nose, she got a nose job. That was what from the last book, why everyone was like, why do you look different? Or where were you for a few months? She had a nose job. But more importantly, she calls her faux Olivia because she bought, she bought fake Louis Vuitton scarves off of the streets in New York when they were there to like give to people. But anyway, now they're recruiting people and they're trying to find a new Dylan and a new Kristen, like people who are exactly like them, which is like, weird and also in the world of alicia she is now offered to get cam fisher's older brother harris tickets to the strokes concert from her dad because he can get tickets for whatever and he is in 11th grade and he's like yeah maybe i'll take you with me an 11th grade guy taking a seventh grade girl to a concert that it just like made me uncomfortable that how Mm, no. Alicia has finally told Claire and Massey and all of them that Cam likes Claire and Massey freaks out and Alicia says it because she realizes at a soccer game that Massey is totally crushing on Cam. Claire's like, oh my gosh, no way. And Massey in like defense, in like jealousy is like, no, he's like totally an eternal wannabe. You don't want him, Claire. And Alicia's like, really? Or are you just saying that because you liked him and you're jealous. So Massey's kind of got this incentive for Claire, like you have to ditch Cam to stay in with me. Also, there was a conversation between Alicia and faux Olivia about Alicia becoming the alpha and faux Olivia is gonna be her beta, which I thought was so funny that they like have all these like social tears. Massey, how she finally tells Alicia that she knows that they cheated she gets Kristen, Dylan, and Claire to help her paint this big mural that's like depicting Alicia cheating. And they invite Alicia over 
and they're like on the wall it's like in Claire out Alicia and Alicia's like seriously hurt by it she actually ends up talking to like Claire Dylan and Kristen later at different various points and they're all like I'm sorry like I know that was mean but it's hard to say no to Massey and Alicia's like I know I was mean because of Massey too and so they all acknowledge that they're mean but they all are like succumbing to the peer pressure that is Massey. Also, I, I think this book, this one's good because it goes from like, it focuses in on Alicia, it focuses in on Massey, focuses in on Claire, which makes me excited for, I think, I'm hoping, the other books eventually focus in on Dylan and Kristen because I want to get to know them more because as of right now, all Kristen is is brains and athletics and she has like uptight parents. And all Dylan is is this girl who is like, obsessed with diets and like her mom is forcing her to diet and she like burps she's not like the other girls and like it's kind of annoying but to keep claire and dylan in her trustworthy circle massey gets them each to tell a secret and kristen finally tells them that her family does not have money which is something she told claire in the first book dylan's secret is that her mom is sending her to a camp where they are going to like make her stick to a diet and they're calling it like a fat camp but i'm not fully sure what exactly this camp is and it's just like i hate that dylan's whole personality is just like her weight her friends always are talking about her weight what she's eating oh she burps because she like weighs more like it's so annoying it's something i don't like in this series which is also part of the reason I want to eventually get into Dylan's perspective because I want to know is she thinking like this or is everyone just like projecting this onto her but yeah I got like super sucked into this just now and like read a bunch and I'm excited to keep reading I've gotten so distracted in life that I have been reading Revenge of the Wannabes really slow but I'm gonna update you on what I have read and I only have a little bit left so hopefully the next clip is me finishing out this book. Okay so basically Alicia has like manipulated everyone to turn against Massey. She has used Kristen and Dylan's secrets to get them to join her side and she has told Claire that Massey is actually a really bad friend for making her think she should dump Cam when really Massey was just jealous because she liked Cam. Claire is like insecure and she wants to stay on Massey's good side and she actually mentions part of the reason she wants to stay on Massey's good side is because they essentially like live together basically because Claire lives in the guest house um, so they see each other all the time and like I've been loving them being friends like it's been nice the bullying has not been directed at Claire because she's different it's been directed at ex-friends which there should not be any bullying but I just think it's been more interesting to see like the arguments when it comes from relationships that have fallen apart rather than just targeting someone you don't know so Alicia and Claire have gone to Cam's house and he is the only person in this book so far who's had like an extremely normal house that we've been to and i love it she's like the basement has like this gross colored carpeting and it goes up onto the wall and like she was like there's like clutter and like it seems like a normal house and it like makes claire happy because you know everyone she's been exposed to in Westchester so far is wealthy like even Lane is really wealthy yeah and they finally acknowledge Cam makes a comment that Harris who is in 11th grade and Alicia who is in 7th grade he's like yeah he does not like her or like that'd be weird if they dated because she's so much younger so I was glad someone finally made a comment about that and we end up finding out Harris did not want to invite Alicia to the concert he's inviting this girl named Angela and like he does not like Alicia like a crush so that's good alicia realizes that and she's still kind of annoyed about it but it makes sense that she doesn't get it because she's a child in alicia's click are now corey and strawberry who are the new dylan and Kristen. curious to see if they'll stick around they seem kind of like they don't fully understand the rules of like a click like 
Basically, Alicia's trying to recreate the pretty committee and like they don't understand the things that Alicia and Massey and all them had going on and Alicia's just trying to like copy paste. So Alicia blackmailed Kristen and Dylan. She got the secrets about them from Todd, which is Claire's little brother, and she has like used him as her guinea pig to help her to eavesdrop and I feel like a lot of the characters are like using Todd in different ways like Massey basically learns from Todd that he was the one that gave Alicia the secrets kind of indirectly but he isn't discreet and so she learns that. Something I found funny is that Massey compares herself to Julius Caesar and she compares Alicia to Brutus. I just thought that was funny. Something that I like in this book is that every single character is like morally gray, I guess. Nobody is perfect. Everyone has bouts of being mean. Everyone has bouts of being insecure. I have liked every character and disliked every character at certain points. In this book, I actually found myself feeling for Massey when all of her friends leave her and she is just so lonely and she has no siblings to connect with. Her parents are gone on a, seeing their friends. My blinds? My, my curtains? Every time the curtains blow, it reminds me of that scene in the Great Gatsby movie where they curtains all blow in. Love. But yeah, I just love that everyone, like no one's perfect. Like it's very realistic that to real life, like you're not gonna meet someone who's perfect in every way and it's nice and it's everything like I like that aspect of the book I'm all this information is getting jostled but Claire had broke things off with Cam and she told him she had like a Florida boyfriend which was not true and she said that I had to stay on Massey's good side and that was kind of when Alicia was like yeah Massey's not really your friend blah 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 when really like Massey is becoming friends with Claire like she truly is. She kind of has a moment where her mom actually gives her life advice. She actually speaks to her mom. Her mom gives her guidance about forgiving people and moving on and it's kind of skewed advice, but my camera died so we're gonna have to do with this perspective for a second. Massey actually kind of realizes that she needs to treat people better. Massey actually tells Cam that Massey told Claire to cut it off with him because she heard some rumor about him. And so they are actually back on good terms. And we realize this while all the girls are at, they're at a dinner before their photo shoot. And for some reason, all the boys come, Harris, Cam, Darrington, but it's also Claire, Alicia, Kristen, Dylan, Massey, Corey and Strawberry. I can't remember all these people. Claire realizes then, um, Massey tells her what she did and kind of they get back on good terms. It all comes clean how Alicia has manipulated everyone and now everyone is kind of upset. And by everyone, I mean Kristen, Dylan, and Claire. They're kind of over Alicia. So I'm curious to see how this book finishes out. This book has been like drama packed for the short span of time that it's been happening in, but I've enjoyed seeing like the character growth in Massey. I've finished Revenge of the Wannabes. So how this book finishes out, there is a, a giant fight at the photo shoot. Literally Massey and Alicia are ripping at each other's hair. Strawberry, Corey, Dylan, and Kristen are all fighting. Claire's just standing off to the side and the photographer's snapping pictures of it all. And at first they think they've ruined the photo shoot, but then Massey is like, oh, you know, Lucinda, you had a great idea to have us do photos showcasing the stress of the holidays. And so they end up using the photos anyway. While all the chaotic fighting is going on, Alicia and Massey just burst out laughing. While all the fighting is going on, Alicia and Massey burst out laughing and they end up apologizing to each other and they're like, okay, we're even on the conditions that, on the conditions that Alicia ditches Corey and Strawberry and Olivia cannot sit at the table with them, but she can still be friends with her, but she can't sit at the lunch table, but Claire is now welcome to sit at the lunch table. So Claire's kind of a new member and then Massey's like, get rid of, Cory and Strawberry right now and so Alicia takes him out. Photo shoot ends up being over and Massey's like, sorry, like now we're even. So it ends up that they're all friends and it ends 
with a non-denominational holiday tree lighting and the tree is covered in ornaments that are all the student ID cards from OCD and um, oh my gosh, I almost just said Aglian, Aglian B or whatever the school is from Raven's Cycle because I'm reading that. What's the boys school? Briarwood. We finish out, Massey is realizing that she kind of likes Darrington, who he likes her. Cam and Claire are together. Everything is back to normal, but wait, on the very last page, we can't finish out without a little drama. Todd tells Massey that he's overheard his parents found a house in Chicago. So Claire and family are gonna be moving out of the Blocks house. And Massey's actually really sad about it because she now likes Claire. She thinks of Claire as like a sister and she likes having someone, a friend at her house all the time. So the ins and the outs for this book. Okay, what's in is Claire, Claire is in. I, Claire is like my favorite character. She's like the most normal and like even though she is not perfect, no one in this story is, but she is like the most relatable as in she really knows what's right and wrong. I did begin to like Massey a bit more in this book, so she can be in too, I guess but she knows she's being mean and she actively chooses to be mean. Whereas like Claire, it feels pressure to be mean. What's out is Ewes, um, Eternal Wannabes. Alicia's back in the squad, so no more Ewes. But like for being how old these books are, like I feel like I'm actually enjoying them and like they're just like fun. And I feel like I keep saying that, but like it's true. Like, it's the same as, this is a weird comparison, but it's the same as like when you read a classic, there's gonna be things in the book that are telling of what the times were like. So like, yes, there is stuff that I said that's not ideal, like about Dylan's weight and like the way they treat Dylan because of her weight and how she feels about herself is telling of what the times were like back then. And it doesn't make it right, but like, I think it's important to be able to read old things and look at it with a critical eye and see see what was wrong and know and be able to point it out now. So yeah, aside from like that sort of stuff, I'm actually really enjoying these. And like, not that I thought I would hate them, but I thought there would be a lot more issues in them than there are. But yeah, now it's time for me to start the next book. Uh, let's go. I just started Invasion of the Boy Snatchers and I forgot to tell you that in the last book, the Dixon thing that Alicia was given was fake. It, they gave, She literally received a piece of packaging. So she was just wearing plastic and a Dixon is not like a mesh tube. It's actually like this metal bendable thing. Massey just got from Teen People, or she just mentioned that she got it from Teen People. Invasion of the Boy Snatchers. I'm reading way too many books right now and I can't remember what I've said about this so far and I'm not super far. The plot of this book so far is that Alicia's cousin, who's in eighth grade, is in town and so far all we know is that she's way prettier than Massey thought she was gonna be, so now she's a threat. But what I really wanted to mention, so I was looking up the author, Lisey Harrison, as one does. She's written a lot of books, by the way. But she posted about this podcast called Girls Like Us, which obviously is a click term. I was like, I need to listen to this. And I am not a podcast person. I like cannot listen to audiobooks. But I was folding laundry and I was like, I'll just give it a go. Like, while I'm doing something mindless. And I got hooked into it. These girls in this podcast each episode is dedicated to reading one of these books and talking about it. And they have a lot of similar takes as I do, but I think they have a lot of better conversations about what's wrong with these books and like more in-depth takes than I'm taking. I'm kind of more just explaining everything, which they do in their podcast explain. So if you're looking for like more conversation about these books, which I know that when I found this, I was so excited. If you did read these books and you're looking for another place and more conversation about these books, um, I definitely recommend their podcast. They've also read other books for their podcast, so they've read the Pretty Little Liars books, and they're going to be reading Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants soon, and I just have to say, 
this that is iconic of them and i want to read all of these books now because they're like so fun but something they said in their podcast that i liked is that all the characters are morally bereft and they also said that it's clear that Lisi made everyone not perfect which i also have mentioned but they also made them all imperfect to the point of being like kind of hateable which is so true but like they're hateable like you love to hate them they compared it to like reality tv and that is a perfect comparison i think they used the quote fully embraced trash or something that's i think that's a good analysis they made a good point in their podcast that we don't actually know if dylan is fat or if it's everyone gaslighting her which i thought was very interesting and after i listened to that i got to a point in this book where Claire says to Dylan, aren't we the same size? And Dylan's like, no. But if they are almost the same size, why is everyone only harassing Dylan? And is it because Dylan is so obsessed with like dieting and like, I don't know, still hate that that's like Dylan's whole personality. But yeah, I can't guarantee I'll be, it'll be the same day when you hear from me again. Actually, it probably won't be, it'll probably be another clip. But I'll link the Girls Like Us podcast um, somehow down below so you can find them because they also go off on some funny tangents and it's pretty enjoyable. I don't even know when I started this video. I need to finish this so I can do other things, other videos, so I can post this video. I don't know what happened. I got busy, okay? Literally a page in and this middle school is now, now has its first alcohol-free cocktail kiosk. Why? So the cocktails place is called Virgins and Nina, which is Alicia's cousin who's there, was like, oh, is that what this is called? I can't be standing here. She's in eighth grade. This book is wild, but we have another new term. T-F-F-W, two funny four words. Everyone's telling Kristen that the boys won't like her because she has short hair now. And now Dylan said something about like her weight again and everyone said, you're not fat. So basically in the first three books were they just like gaslighting her? I, uh, these books, it's the Friday night sleepover and guess who's tagged along? Nina. And she's causing trouble. Massey does not like her. Also, she's literally only a year older than them and she's acting like she has lived an entire life. And she's like, you have no experience with boys. Wow, like, are you children? It's like, you're literally a year older than them. Like, I have a feeling she's like lying about things because she keeps avoiding phone calls from her sister and I don't know why. I think there's gonna be something fishy about her. Yeah, basically, so far in this book, like, so many characters are annoying me. And this this book has a lot more, like, just parts that date it and make me just like, ugh, meh. The last book I read was more fun, like, fun trash. And this is just like, mm, this one's not as fun. This one's more trash. Everyone is so unbearable. Kristen just picked the guy she wants to like kiss at the dance because they're coming up with like a bet for who will kiss a guy at the dance I guess and Nina will give whoever wins boots but only Kristen and Dylan have agreed picked some guy because she said he takes pictures like up girls skirts so she thinks he'll be easy to like get a date with Ugh. I can't believe I read these as a child who allowed that? I'm sitting here editing this video and I never told you that the Lions moving to Chicago was resolved immediately in the beginning of the book because everyone threw a fit. Claire, Claire's mom, Claire's brother, Massey, Massey's mom. And so the dads talked about it and everyone like fell asleep outside of their office while they talked about it. And they decided that the Lions, they were gonna take down the guest house and completely rebuild it. And they were gonna give the Lions a raise so that they could like stay. because. Claire's dad works for Massey's dad. Then that means for the rest of the book, Claire and Massey will have to share a bedroom. Cause somehow in this mansion, they only have enough bedrooms for Todd to have his own room and then the parents, to both parents to have their own rooms. And so Massey and Claire will have to share room. Roommates. 
So Massey and Claire have to share room, but turns out Claire is allergic to Bean, which is Massey's dog. And so Massey is not happy about Bean having to leave the room and live somewhere else. And both Massey and Kristen have noticed things have gone missing. I suspect it's Nina. I suspect she's stealing things. I wonder if her sister keeps calling because maybe she stole her sister's clothes. In this book, they've introduced Glossip Girl, which is a lip gloss subscription. Kind of reminds me of Lip Smackers, which Lip Smackers were a big thing when I was reading these books. And I had so many flavors and that's what the Glossip Girl reminds me of. And it makes me want to go buy Lip Smackers even though they literally made my lips so chapped. Nina, am I a used band-aid? Uh, no. Then why did you rip me off? See, here's a typo. Instead of were you waiting long, it's we're you waiting long, like we are. I finished the fourth book. This book took me way too long to read for how short it is. I just like, this one was slumpy for sure. So let's review. I think this is the first book of this series that has only had like one plot point. Like there was one thing throughout and it was that Alicia's cousin Nina was there and she was like the villain of the story. And so this one takes place around Valentine's Day. They're having this like Cupid dance to get their date to the dance. All the boys from the boys school wear Velcro and the girls have to shoot at them with arrows that will stick. And if they stick, then they take them to the dance, which is like so weird like what if some guy gets hit by a girl he did not like or something or i don't know like why are you forcing kids to go together so massey doesn't like nina because nina is like knows all this boy experience and has all this like advice about fashion and is like basically upping massey and like popularity at the school so the first plan that claire alicia and massey come up with to get rid of her is called Operation Toe Jam. And they get a bunch of bubble gum and they like chew it up and spit it out so her shoes get stuck. And then they take her to the nurse who has the lost and found, who Claire is friends with. And they, Claire basically forces her to wear two different shoes, but then it starts a trend. So like that plan backfires. And like during that plan, Nina is like crying about the boots that she's ruined with the gum and Claire feels like guilty for a minute and then she like is like, no, I'm not, I, I don't care, whatever. I'm gonna be mean to her because she's still my boyfriend. Because throughout this book, Massey has not spoken to Darrington and Claire has not spoken to Cam. And something else in this book that they do is they have a bag of candy hearts and they use it as like a fortune teller. So it'll be like, hearts, do they love me? And then they pull out a heart and it'll be like, no, or like, whatever and they'll interpret it however so in the end at the cupid dance they end up doing operation booty call because they find out from a phone call to spain from nina's sisters that she has stolen all of their nice clothes so basically all the clothes she's been wearing she stole from her sisters they make the connection oh everyone who's had their stuff stolen it was nina and then they go into like stealth mode Claire, Alicia, and Massey, and they break into the boys' locker room. Okay, let me back up. They had hidden a camera on Nina in hopes of catching her stealing, but instead the camera gets dropped in the boys' locker room. The principal announces it as like, it's something that's gonna be investigated because like they think the, a different school is like trying to cheat. They obviously realize it was their camera and they're like, why was Nina in the boys' locker room? So they go to investigate. They just like break into the school. They find that Nina has hidden all the stuff she's stolen in one of the guy's lockers. And the way she did it was that she gave him a lock, which she had stolen. It was Kristen's lock, so she knew the code because Kristen had said it was like David Beckham's birthday or something, I don't know. And so they find all this stuff and they're like, oh, we're gonna have to get her back. So they get her back at the dance. They like slice the heels off of her shoes by having like Claire's brother massage her feet and then they steal the shoes, cut the heel off. And then when she gets selected as like a winner for this like Cupid dance for like hitting so many guys, I guess. I don't know, I didn't really get that. When she gets called up, she falls over and then Alicia, who is like the school newscaster and is announcing this, is like announcing that like she's a thief and she dumps all the stuff out that Nina had stolen. And then from the sky dumps all these pictures of Nina 
when she was like less fashionable like her with braces and stuff and it's so mean and like how did they set all this up to have these photos fall down and like you kind of feel bad for her in this book every single character is like so dislikable like beyond like in the past books it's like yeah they're mean but it's like a trashy funny this they're just like vile like these children are vile okay so one of the other things that's going on throughout this is that Kristen now has short hair and they keep like calling her a boy which it's just like one of those things where it's like Ugh, like why also throughout this whole book Dylan is getting progressively more sick and at the end Kristen's mom is a chaperone at this party because they, the girls have gotten detention like several times throughout this book for like their various things they've done. Oh, I forgot to say like at one point like Massey dumps milk on this girl named Cookie, which the names in here are so weird. That's one of the reasons they get detention. But Kristen's mom is like pissed at Kristen for getting detention so many times. So she becomes a chaperone at this event. And Dylan is like talking about Kristen's mom, but because she has a stuffy nose, she says Kristen's bomb. And uh, someone overhears them and thinks that Kristen has brought a bomb to the dance. So the whole dance ends up getting shut down. The book ends and they're at a soccer game for the boys. And Kristen's all decked out and she has her short hair and the coach thinks she's a member of the team. So when Darrington gets hit in the face with the ball, he calls her out and she like joins the team, which is so random, but she's like so excited about it. So that's good, I guess. Like, how do you not know your own players? But anyway, so like Darrington's out, he texts Massey like, oh, come meet me. And he's like, oh, you know, it wasn't even worth it. And she's like, what? He's like, oh, you know, the Spanish spell. So the reason Darrington and Cam were not talking to Claire and Massey was because, so basically if they didn't talk to them, they would win the game. This is what Nina convinced them of. And Massey's like, oh my gosh, like, she like doesn't say that she like wasn't in on it, but her and like Darrington have like a little cute moment and he like gives her the trophy for the Cupid award. And he's like, is this enough for you? Like for the, how long I wasn't talking to you? And she's like, she's like, yeah, if we were in a Disney movie, but then she's like, yeah, it is. And then she gives him a little, little M brooch that she has. And then the very last chapter comes out of nowhere and it's Claire having her first kiss. And then it's revealed that it's with Josh, who she just waved to like three minutes before. And then Cam walks in and is like, oh, great. So much for like girlfriends and friends. Cause Claire didn't know about the Spanish curse thing. So she thought that Cam just like had dumped her. But yeah, that's how the story ends. Pretty wild. You know what? I just realized I like pinned down a bunch of pages. Here's another disc. Claire, do I spend eight hours a day sitting at a big round desk in the middle of the mall? No. Then why do you think I have the information? So I mentioned that they have these Glossip Girl subscriptions and on one of the pages they said that the flavors were raisin pudding and hay. That's repulsive. There's this one scene I marked because they're like trying to say things in Spanish and Alicia, who you would think would know the most Spanish, says ciao Bella. And Massey says, isn't that Italian? And she goes, I don't know. It means she's so dead, right? And then I also tabbed that the DJ at their dance was wearing, dressed like Cupid, and he was just wearing a big diaper, which is weird. So the ins and the outs, that's a tough one. I don't know what's in. What's out is literally like every single character in this book. There's really got on my nerves in this one. Oh, I'll say what's in is brooches. These books are so wild. That is that. I have read books three and four. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be taking a break from these books for a while because this one was so slumpy for me and I have a lot of other ideas I want to work on. I want to read the rest of the books, not sure if I will, if this is still something I'll continue. I have a bunch more of them and like access to all, all of them from the library, so we'll see, but for now we're just gonna take a little break from this. If you made it this far, thanks. Thanks for comment. Um, you should comment this emoji. And then you should like the video and you should subscribe. Oh, wouldn't that be so cool? Like if you subscribe. From your ghost host, Shelby. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.